Hey guys, Angel Arts here, and I'm confused. I don't know what to think right now, so we were going after... Ian, oh my gosh. Yes, last episode was an Ian fest. So we're continuing on. I just watched this previous episode. It's good. It's so good. Thursday. You head to the athletic house after your last class. After nobody answers, you try the door. Find it unlocked. You let yourself in. The house is unusually quiet today. Brad? Come on up, man. I'm in my room. The wise old core floorboards creak as you climb the steps. Uh-oh. Brad doesn't look happy. Brad, do you ever change into different clothes? He tosses you a stack of stapled paper. It's his essay. There's a red 69 scrawled on top of it. Mm hmm. Huh, at least it's a 69, right? I got a D. I knew writing my own papers was a terrible idea. Wait. You're fired, Matthews. Get out of here. Wow. You run off before things escalate. You are no longer tutoring Brad. I don't care about no longer tutoring Brad. I don't... I don't care about any of that. Thank God this week's over. Time to relax and get your mind off this drama. You send Penny a text. Hey, wanna do something tonight? I wish. I gotta pull an all-nighter at the lab to get my beta ready this weekend. Your heart sinks. Okay, just checking. No worries. I've got stuff to do anyway. Don't give me the side-eye art. I'm not going to sit around moping. I'm going to put myself out there tonight, grab life by the test, and give it an amicable squeeze. Obviously, the first sort of business is updating my BroFinder pick. I'm about to get real crazy tonight. That's right, I'm putting on my F me sweater and taking a pick. Two hours later. Why can I never find the right lighting? Just as you start to download a photo editor, you hear the living room door open, followed by a series of thumps. Penny... You walk out to the living room, alarmed. Dude, who moved the doorway? Ian staggers around on wobbly legs. The strong smell of beer indicates he's very, very wasted. Please tell me you didn't drive yourself home. No, I got a ride from Zoe. Oh. Yeah, she and I were talking about stuff. Oh, your girlfriend. Um, wow. Talking's always cool, I guess. Yeah, commu communa communication is key. Ian stumbles forward. You catch him and steer him towards his room. I don't want to take advantage of him. You do the awkward shuffle with the wasted friend down the hall. Somehow he ends up hooking a finger through one of your belt loops as you lead him toward the bedroom. He bumps into you, giggling. His oh god, his body. You hate yourself right now for being so aware of it. How your hair stands on end whenever he brushes against you. Cursing the universe silently, you leave Ian disoriented, standing in the middle of his bedroom. A low moan stops you in your tracks. You turn around to see Ian struggling to remove his shirt. One arm hangs through the neck hole of his shirt like an alien from a low-budget B-movie. Oh my goodness. Take advantage of him though. Help me! Oh, for goodness sakes. You decide to help yank off Ian's shirt before he ends up strangling himself. I'm free! Yes! Yes, you are, Ian. Yes, you are. You wish you could laugh, but all you feel is yourself straining angrily against your pants. You need to get out of here. You, you, you turn to exit. Shoes? Ian points helplessly at his feet. Uh, Ian, take them off yourself. Okay. Ian falls flat on his face as he paws at his shoelaces. Uh, Ian, he's too adorable. Your eyes wander his body as you help him up, trying to avoid staring too long at his bare shoulders and smooth, muscular back. Chuckling, he puts a hand on your shoulder to steady himself as you reach down to untie his laces. You aren't thinking about the bulge in his jeans inches away from your face. Not at all. Nor his hands on your head as you unlace his knots, his fingers softly massaging your skull in a way that makes you crazy. 
you throb. You focus on his laces. Left lace, right lace. Left shoe, right shoe. Double knots, really man? Are you in kindergarten? Hey, 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 don't knock the double knots. I still, to this day, I still to this day rock the double knots. Hey, I had my first kiss in kindergarten. Don't knock that lace. Ian! Ian shifts, you, shifts to give you better access to his other leg, grabbing your hair for leverage, struggling to maintain his balance. Ow! You feel like you've got a steel rod in your pants. Is he gonna ask me to room his, remove his pants next? Okay, I'm leaving, man. Wait! I've been such a punk to you, dude. Look, maybe we should have this conversation later when you're not completely trashed. I'm not completely trashed. <laughs> but listen, dude, I'm really sorry. I'm speaking from the depths- You were tricking me the whole time- Ian! I'm really sorry, I'm speaking from the depths of my soul here. You glimpse the dark fur leading from his navel into his jeans. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh... Gotta go. You hurry to your room. Mark, at least hear him out. You start ripping off your clothes, anxious to relieve yourself when you hear a knock at your door. You bolt up, startled. Hey, why'd you leave? I'm not done apologizing. With that, Ian lets himself in and stumbles over to the bed. Dude. I've been such a horrible friend. I should have been helping you get laid, instead of, you know, being judgy and, and cock-blocking. I went overboard, didn't I? A tad, perhaps. After waiting this long to come out, you must be dying for tons of action, am I right? Where is this going, Ian? Don't tease me like this, please. He releases a little sigh. The scent of alcohol in his breath tickles your, no tickles your nose. All I was hoping was to meet somebody. I mean, sex or no sex. He takes a seat beside you on the bed, slumping over, gazing at you with a sleepy expression. It's not as if this is the first time you've seen him shirtless, but tonight you find yourself fighting one dirty thought after another. You know, your bed is a lot more comfortable than mine. Maybe because I don't have a bunch of stale chips ground in it. I don't even know how you even talked those girls onto your bed that other night. Thing is a biohazard. These two are so cute. This like that Mark and and Ian are so cute, dude. I never told you how that night went down, did I? You considered the question, wondering if listening to him jabber on about some girls would make you less horny. Sounds like you want to tell me about it, so tell me. Ian smiles at you, his eyes searching your face. So during this three-way, I'm like switching off between these two girls. Looking giddy, he crawls onto the bed next to your body, apparently quite eager to regale the tales of his conquest. Holly's on the bottom, and Miley's, Molly's, looking, Molly's lying on top of her. You scoot over. Your bed has just enough room for the two of you to lie side by side without touching. You really don't need to go into explicit detail. He lies back, his face towards the ceiling, tucking one hand underneath his head, while the other absently strokes his chest. You make a concerted effort not to stare at him, slipping your hand underneath the sheet and you push yourself to the side to relieve the pressure. Look, I'm not telling you all this to brag, dude, if that's what you're thinking. What I really wanted to tell you is that is what was in my head at the time. Oh yeah? What was in your head, Ian? Our kiss. Oh, oh wow, it's so cold. Oh. Ian! Oh my god, Ian! At the party. I just, I've wanted to kiss you forever. Oh, Ian! I was so turned on. And don't hate me, dude, but I was thinking about you when I came. <laughs> oh, Mark. Oh, Mark, Mark, Mark. I'm sorry. You can feel the hairs on your neck stand up. The room is silent. You're trembling. You wonder if Ian can hear your heart pounding. I 
I've never gotten such a boner from one stupid kiss, you know? He chuckles. Well, aside from the one we had after the night at the bar. He sighs and turns over, facing away from you. You lift your head to look at him. Ian's back is to you. His shoulders, broad and smooth, invite your touch. In the light, you can see the undulations of his back, narrowing into a V that disappears into his jeans. Ian, you lying sack of stuff. Tell me you're joking. Ian, you want to roll him over, look you into the eye, and repeat what he just said. Repeat it a million times to reassure you that you're not dreaming. Ian! You touch his shoulder, shaking it gently, and responds, murmuring. You panic as he turns, smiles, wraps his arms around you, buries his head against your chest, and sighs. Mm. He presses his body, his warm skin, and hot flesh against yours. You inhale the scent of his neck, a heady, olfactory cocktail of sweat and alcohol. You're swooning, dizzy, frozen. He closes his eyes and breathes deeply, his chest rising and falling against your body. Yeah, his body goes limp. He seems to have passed out. You don't know how long you lie there, afraid to move, arms entwined, his head in the crook of your neck. This is really sweet. This is really sweet. It's not like hardcore. It's just... It's exactly what I, what, what I wanted. I didn't want it to be like... I wanted something tasteful, and just seeing the two of them, their bond, it's just so sweet to watch. You study the soft curl of his eyelashes, his pillowy lips slightly open, resting inches away from yours. You feel an un overwhelming urge to kiss him. Fall asleep cuddling with him. Extricate yourself and sleep beside him. Wake him up and send him back to- no. Fall asleep cuddling. Let's cuddle. I, I don't wanna- I don't want him to- I, I want him to know that I'm respecting him and not just like being too super presumptuous. Fall asleep cuddling with him. The warmth and heat of his body feels amazing. Sleep is almost impossible. You drift in and out, beset with dreams of undoing his jeans, licking his ear, his neck, his, his chest, excuse me. At one point, you wake up to find yourself spooning him with an almost painful hard on. Jack off in the back of the neck, to this, this too shall pass. Jack off next day. Why not? Why not? You can't take much more of this. You start, you start to do yourself slowly, doing your best not to shake the bed. You bite your lip, allowing your eyes to roll up and down his back, and eventually settling on his bubble butt, which fills out the back of his jeans quite nicely. You pulse it in your hand, you feel yourself about... You shut your eyes as you approach your climax, whispering between gritted teeth. Oh god. You look over at Ian again, hoping to steal one more look before you go, and almost have a heart attack. Ian's heads, heads turn towards you, eyes wide open. He's staring straight at you. Dude! Oh gosh. Oh gosh. An eternity passes as it deflates in your hand. Without a word, Ian gets up and rushes out. You hear the sound of his door slap shut. Oh gosh. Saturday morning. You wake up to someone knocking on your bedroom door. Ian? Your door opens. It's Penny. Penny enters and places a box on your desk. Well, I got the gift. The gift? Ian's birthday gift, silly. I picked it up yesterday. Just make sure you bring it up to the restaurant tomorrow. It still needs to be wrapped. Okay, I can do that. I can get him a card, too. You glance over at the box. I can't believe we're getting him this. Don't look at me. It was at the top of his wish list. She shudders. Phew, we finally got some downtime this weekend. In terms of your studies, you're kicking butt. Your relationship with Penny is great these days. You feel grateful for her friendship. Things are rocky between you and Ian. And finally, you've got $350 in savings. What will you do with your extra time this weekend? Um, treat Penny to a dinner out at the new Tempura Fondue place. We've been doing a lot of stuff with Penny. I want to do stuff with Ian. Tutor to student lender setting to get some extra studying done. Uh, let's get some extra cash. I've been doing a lot of stuff with Penny lately. You tutor for a total of 8 hours of the weekend and you make $160. You now have $510 in savings. Monday. 
After classes, you head over to Honey's with Penny. You're also feeling tense, also a bit conspicuous holding a bag with Ian's gift tucked inside. You know, I haven't seen Ian all weekend. Is he busy with work or something? Uh, yeah, that's probably it. He couldn't possibly have forgotten his birthday, right? That'd be un unlikely. This is his favorite day of the year. You try to keep the nervousness out of your voice. Try texting him again. Penny punches a few buttons on her phone. You wait, pacing, growing more and more antsy with each passing second. You haven't spoken to Penny about what's up between you and Ian. Maybe it would help if I told her. Hey, Penny, I... Finally! Ian's fortuitous entrance stops you mid-sentence. Hey, guys, sorry I'm late. Both of you glance at each other and quickly avert your eyes. Well, I hope you're starving. Let's eat! What have you been up to lately, Ian? Ian? We barely see you anymore. Oh, I know. Are you seeing someone I had and haven't told us? That must be it. You're always so shy when you're into somebody new. She must be super cute. Are you trying to pull one over on us? You can't hide her away forever. Spell the beans, Ian. Or don't. I bet I could find out who this mystery girl is. I'm pretty sharp when it comes to detective work. Ian stares at a soup bowl for a moment, seemingly transfixed by a single basil leaf skimming its surface. Finally, he looks up. I'm going away with Zoe this weekend. Aww. Whoa, seriously? You guys are getting back together? You stare at Ian across the table. You feel like you've been kicked in the nuts. He avoids beaming your eyes. Ian, we're working out a few things. You fold your napkin over and over and over again in your lap, struggling to sound casual. I would probably get up at this point and leave. Where are you guys going? Vegas. She's taking me for my birthday. That sounds fun. Have a great trip. Um, okay. Well then. Mark, let's give Ian his gift. Gift? You guys shouldn't have. You already took me to lunch. Then he rolls her eyes, grabs the bag next to your feet, and hands it to Ian. He peers into the bag. We saw it at the top of your wish list. The Jack Buddy. It's the deluxe model. Uh... Well, what's wrong? He slowly looks at the gift, then looks at you. Hmm, this kinda looks like your hand, dude. Oh my god, it does not. Penny glances at your hand and then at the Jack Buddy. Haha! <laughs> oh my god, it kinda does! Right down to the hair and around the knuckles. Oh, great. What are you trying to insinuate here? Nothing, it's a coincidence, and I guess it's a little awkward. Trust me, that's not intentional. Me and Ian, it's, and Ian, it's hot. Nothing, that's a coincidence, Ian. I resent the implication, dude. Oh my god, you seriously think I got you something just because it looks like my hand? It's just a little odd. I guess you should have gotten the ladies' model, Penny. Uh, I gotta go. Throwing his napkin on the chair, Ian gets up and leaves. This is so rough. All right, what is going on between you two? Uh, oh boy, the look in your faces says I'd better get another glass of wine. Maybe the whole bottle. One bottle later. So yeah, that's what's been going on. What's your take on all this? Well, let me get this out of the way first. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Aside from that, it's obvious you guys need a serious heart-to-heart. -heart. I know, but he's avoiding me again. Maybe if he ever talks to me, aside from that one drunken night, he's never home, he doesn't answer texts, he's totally been avoiding me. I'd say give him a few days. Talk to him when you guys aren't feeling edgy and emotional. Tuesday. A strange stillness that settles into the apartment. Ian seems to be staying clear of you while Penny spends late nights at the lab. You normally savor the peace and quiet, but these days you just feel isolated. You plod through your schoolwork. I'll be out of here soon enough. Friday. That afternoon, you hear noises from Ian's room. He's home, which is a rare occurrence these days. You realize he's probably packing his things for his trip this weekend with Zoe. No, I want to talk to him. You knock on Ian's bedroom door. Time to do this. Can we talk? Sure, I've got a few minutes before I take off with Zoe. I thought it was over between you two. What's going on? I don't feel like talking about it, dude. <laughs> Are you here just to get on my case about Zoe, or did you actually have some legit, something legit to talk about? I'm here because I've got feelings for you, Ian. I can't deal with this right now, Mark. 
Like I said, I'm working out some issues with Zoe. So that's it then. You feel nothing for me. This is all one-sided. I'm delusional is what you're saying. I never said that. So you do feel something? Yes, I'm afraid. Yes, I'm afraid. You're my best friend. This is confusing. It really stinks. Is that the answer you wanted? Yeah, it's an honest answer. I just want you to talk to me. Ian, I just want you to talk to me. If you're feeling... We're best friends. I want you to be able to talk to me about this. It's that's that's the basis. That's the one of the most important things of any relationship, whether it's platonic or romantic. Either way. And your solution is to run away with your ex. Don't tell me how to approach my own feelings. Just get the f out of my room, Mark. I gotta pack. Good luck finding anything in this pigsty. You storm out and slam the door. Back in your room, you hit the books in a laughable attempt to study. You can barely focus. You're so distracted, you wish you were going away this weekend. It's your phone. You pick it up. How'd it go? It could have gone better. I'm sorry, Mark. Don't be. Let's say I'm actually glad he's leaving this weekend. Oh, jeez. Hopefully things will calm down once he's back and had some time to think. Maybe this is a bad time to ask for a favor, but I'm stuck at the lab again. What's up? Would you mind returning to the Jack Buddy, the Jack Buddy to the store tomorrow when it opens? If we don't return it by tomorrow, we won't get our money back. Sure thing, whatever. Ian's breaking my heart left and right. Thanks, I appreciate it. And watch out, there's some real weirdos in that store. You drive to the store thinking about Ian, thinking about the day you met him. During that first week in college. <laughs> this is so sweet. This is gonna make me cry! <laughs> you were in an icebreaker for your dorm. You remember eyeing the kids around you as they mingled. You stood off from a distance, observing. You felt a little too cool for everything, a little jaded, a little old. But really, you felt like you were barely holding stuff together. College was supposed to be fun, and all you felt was a dull, aching loneliness. This scruffy kid with an unruly mop of hair stood next to you. He was so beautiful and he tried not to stare. All of a sudden he turned to you with a serious look. You know the secret is you know the secret is to meeting people, dude? His eyes flashed under his dark lashes. With that he pulled a very thick, very furry trapper hat over his head. <laughs> the hat. A funny hat! Ian, I have it bad. Oh, I really want Mark and Ian to be together. Oh my gosh, it just feels so right. That's just silly, you said, laughing despite yourself. Is it? He grinned. Well, you're talking to me, right? And that was the beginning. This is a good story. The sex shop is a small mom and pop operation located out in the suburbs of Orland. Soon as you walk in, the smell of latex and patchouli assaults your nose. Feeling self-conscious, you sidle up to the counter with a box. I'd like to return this, please. Here's the gift receipt. A shaggy-haired man stares at you from behind the counter. The Jack Buddy? What'd you find wrong with it? Nothing. It wasn't for me. It was for a friend. Oh, your friend. Right, right. Look, he just didn't want it, okay? Do you, I mean, does your friend want to kill our case of carpal tunnel instead? Um, kid, you know I can't bend this. He raises his right hand. Past a 75 degree angle? Okay. Back in my day, we didn't have these fancy pants pleasure devices. You effing kids these days. You got endless porn at the push of a button. Hook up apps for free easy sex. Thousands of toys to tickle your bits in ways that your gram gram never would have imagined. You know what it's like to wait breathlessly for the swimsuit edition every year? Okay, can I leave now? Or to J off, off, off to underwear models from an old crinkled department store catalog covered with coffee stains and bits of hair? Then get in a slap fight with your old man when he tries to steal it back? That's right, didn't think so. Just two words, kid. ASCII porn. You weren't there, man. You don't know. I'm leaving. Um, can I just please get my money back? I drove an hour out here for this. The cashier snorts. 
As he starts to key something into the register, you see a blonde girl browsing a few S&M devices on the display beside you. Excuse me, I can't see those handcuffs. Oh, it's Zoe. Sorry, let me get out of the way. Zoe? Oh, hey, Mark. Her friendly smile suddenly evaporates. Oh, you know, I think I left my lights on. I better go. Wait, aren't you supposed to be with Ian? Before you can say anything, she rushes out, leaving you confused. Hey, buddy. I need you to fill out this form. You blink at the cashier, wondering why Zoe's still in town. Did Ian lie to me? Is he not actually getting back together with Zoe? He just wants time to himself. Ian, why don't you talk to me? Are we having second thoughts about the Jack buddy? Uh, no. You try to stay focused, despite the fact that your mind is positively reeling. The cashier stares at you as you fill out the form. His eyes grow wide with astonishment. Kid, did you know your hand looks just like the Jack buddy? Yes, I know! I know! Your brain churns with a hundred questions on the way home. Why is Zoe still in town? Did they cancel their trip? Is she covering for him? What the heck's going on? Back at the apartment, you look, heart pounding at Zoe's business card. Her number and dress are printed neatly on the side. Call her up and find... Forget about it, you don't need to get involved. She was avoiding me for some reason. I don't want to make it worse. Forget about it, I don't need to get involved. You figure it's none of your business where Ian is or what he's doing with Zoe. In any case, you've got a ton of studying to do this weekend. You finally come down to that time time this weekend. In terms of your studies, you're kicking butt. Your relationship with Penny is great these days. You feel grateful for a friendship. Things are rocky between you and Ian. What will you do with this extra time? Note, Penny's busy with her final project and Ian's away for the weekend. You won't be able to socialize with either of them. Get some studying done. You spend some time going over a few subjects that have been befuddling you since the semester began. Monday night. You hear a knock on your door. Hey. Ian. You're back. Ian looks around the room, clearly nervous. How is Vegas? Cool, I guess. So, uh... Did you want to chat, Ian? Look, dude, I don't know. I, I just don't know. Between us and this weekend with Zoe, I don't even know how I feel about anything anymore. It's like everything in my mind and my guts has been blended up and it's still just swirling around. I know that's not what you want to hear, Mark, but I can't even tell which way is up right now. I'm sorry to hear that. I know, dude. Mark, I've had amazing times with you ever since we've met. And it's like, you're the closest person in my life right now. I can't say goodbye to that, to you. But I mean, I don't think it could pretty be more than, any more than that right now. I'm really sorry I snapped at you earlier. Your friendship means everything to me. I hope I haven't lost it. All right. Can I, can I get a hug from you, dude? Yeah. Yeah, Ian, you can. Come here, Ian. The two of you embrace. While you wish it could be more than a hug of friendship, it still feels good and warm and solid. Gets your body. And it's the, the door's still open. The door's still open. Who knows? Mark and Ian, they're still young. It's a bittersweet moment, and yet somehow you feel utterly grateful you're friends with this guy. You have a best friend. You know he loves you. Might not be the kind of love you wanted, but it's still worth so much. Saturday. You spend the weekend cramming for your finals. One week later. You finish up your other exams. You're fairly sure you aced them all. Yes! In any case, the graduation ceremony takes place later this weekend, and your parents are making the trip in to watch you walk. Shortly afterwards, you'll be moving out of your apartment. Everything seems like it's moving at a blinding pace. Oh, man. I did it. I'm done. Tonight, you, Ian, and Penny decide to celebrate graduation by hitting the bars on College Row. It's become a ritual for the three of you at the very end of every semester. Alas, this will be the final time. As the sky darkens, the air feels electric. The bars, clubs, and pool halls bustle without celebrating students. Wow, can you believe it? What a crazy semester, right? Especially for you, dude. He's right. It truly has been an unforgettable semester. 
As you, Penny, and Ian enter the bar, grab a drink, and toast one another, you realize there will be plenty of guys to drool over and date. But your friendship with Ian and Penny? You wouldn't trade it. Not for anything. Aww. Congratulations, you, Mark Matthews, are ready to start the next chapter of your life. Aww. That is so sweet. It's a bittersweet ending, but you know, it's real. It's realistic. This thing happens. Sometimes you fall in love with guys that are straight and, you know, they might be unsure, but you can't force them. At the end of the day, you can't push it. You can't force them. If they're, if they're questioning their sexuality, you can't force it. Just like you don't want other people forcing your sexuality, forcing you to be, you know, it's... You gotta let them... Let them be. You graduate with honors, landing your first job at a cutting-edge tech company. It's in a field you're passionate about, and you'll be earning quite a bit of money. You're ecstatic all your hard work's paid off. Despite beta testing until your fingers turn numb, then in fact you're working with your new job, you faithfully help Penny with her app on the weekends. As both her closest friend and lead technical support, she invites you to be her financial partner and marketing director for her startup. After a year of long nights and countless hours, the two of you finally release Profinder and it becomes much, much bigger than anybody would have ever guessed. Aww. <laughs> million. Oh, well, good job, Penny. I'm glad. Two million. Unfortunately, it's also become the reason why nobody, including you, ever pays attention to her keynote speeches or pretty much anything anymore. Aww. So that's it, guys. Coming out on top. Um, I mean, things didn't completely... I, I, I think that the... So like I said, the, the way that things turned out was very realistic. It's very realistic. It happens. Uh, just like when a female friend falls in love with her gay best friend, or a male friend falls in love with a lesbian female friend. It happens. It's just the reality. And, you know, it's not because if the people aren't interested, it's not because they want to hurt you. Because they care about you deeply. It's just they don't... It, they just don't care about you like that. And it's just a reality that everyone, gay, straight, whatever, deals with. And I'm glad that the game did that. I'm glad that it gave you a little bit of, you know, a little bit of Ian. Maybe there is some magical way, there might be some combination of ultimately, you know, ultimately being with Ian. But I'm, I'm perfectly happy with this ending. I'm perfectly happy with this because it just shows like I said, it's just it's just really real, and I think it sends a really good message, and a very good you know it's. I don't think that it means that it it, it very the ending lends itself to very well having Ian and Mark ending up together at the end. I mean maybe Mark tries to date a bit, he starts dating a few guys, Ian starts dating around a bit, and maybe later on if they're meant to be, they'll find each other again and. They're best friends. That's the thing. I'm glad that they're still best friends. They're still best friends. They're still close. Their friendship is so tight. If they truly belong together romantically, it'll happen because they're best friends and they're so close. And, you know, in my head canon, in my head canon, my Mark, my character, in my head canon, Mark and Ian do end up together. And they end up having a beautiful, beautiful, you know, committed relationship. Because Ian's just great. Of all of all of the guys, Ian by far was my favorite. By far. Like, you know, I had a little bit of a soft spot for for Brad, you know, because the red hair, I have a soft spot for red hair. But, you know, ultimately with Brad and he 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 did he was not Ian. Like, we had history with Ian. We had a, a friendship with Ian. It Ian cared about us. He loved us. He loved us, you know, maybe not necessarily romantically, he's still figuring that out. But it's just great that, it's great that, that he cared about, that he cares about us so much. And he wanted, he didn't want to lose that friendship, that's what he says. He didn't want to lose a best friend, no matter what. And he didn't say no, that he didn't have the same feelings for me back, he just needs to work things out. And I think that's at least, I'm satisfied with that ending. So, anyway guys. 
um, that was that was the coming out on top. Um, obviously, you can try going after any of the other guys. Obviously, you could be a little bit less prudish than I was being. But you know, I was just playing the game the way I felt comfortable playing the game, is choosing the things that I would have chosen, and um, I'm, I'm very happy with with what I ended up with, with the results I got. So. Um, I, I, I'll definitely make it a point to put a link to Obscure's game that you can, if you want to purchase it, um, if you're interested. Um, I hope you liked it and hope that you enjoyed the time here. So, to Mark, Ian, and Penny, I raise my glass, my bottle, bottle bottle. To friendship, and who knows, maybe more in the future. So. Thank you guys for watching this episode um, and watching this series of Gay Let's Play coming out on top. Tune in next time for whatever it is I do next, everybody. And until then, love yourselves and love each other.